Hi, I'm Ines from Teich Swimmer. Today we want to deal with a question that every person who wants to have a swim teich in his or her garden has to ask. At some point, the question is, does this work in my garden? The question is, is my property appropriate for a swim teich? But before we come to that topic, I want to show you something in our swim teich. I want to show you today because today is the perfect day for that. It's really hot, it's very sunny, and when it's very hot and very sunny, the sun causes gases. Your channel for swim teichs. Nature in your garden and water that's alive. Enjoy watching. Gases that rise, that raise um, the sediments from the bottom to the surface of the water. This is a, like clusters, let's call them clusters. These are li like little clusters that form around obstacles like hair, one hair, or a leaf, and uh, now there rises one again. This is also an evidence that water circulates, although we haven't installed any pumps. It's the thermic circulation that also makes the water circulate, and this is an evidence for that that the sun causes gases, the gases rise and due to that the water always is in movement. Um, <clears throat> what you do now with those clusters? If you leave them in there, due to the sun, the nutrients binded in the sediments can get set free again and they can be food for algae again. Um, that's why we find it really nice of the sun that uh, she forms those clusters and lets them rise. So it is easy for us to fish them out, those clusters. We have that uh, feeling, whatever I take out cannot cause algae anymore. So there's a difference between a normal landing net and this fine meshed one. Um, I will show you the difference. If I take the leaf, the, the one for the leaves. So, when you do that, it gets quite frustrating because the sediments, the clusters, they just fall apart and small little pieces of sediments go through that net and fall down again. So if I take the algae net, that's really nice because you just go under them, underneath them and you just raise your, raise your um, net and you have it all in there. And I just go and fish the big clusters out. That's it. And of course, again, we come to that uh, tip of ours. Always keep the weather side in mind. Because when there is a windy day, take advantage. Take your landing net, go to the spot where everything gathers and just take all the debris, all the dirt out. I like those days when there's wind. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the real topic. As it is so hot today, it's much better to sit down here and have my feet nicely in the water so I don't get a heat, uh, heat strike. So, does a swim teich work in my garden? What do I have to keep in mind? Okay. First, size of the garden, size of a swim teich. As we have already shown you, 
there's a possibility to have a swim dike in really small gardens. If you haven't seen it, look at that video of Klaus swim teich. That's a really small and nice swim teich. I think the smallest you can build it. The size of course is a question, but I can tell you, you can um, realize a swim teich even in small gardens. The next and maybe most important thing, or one of the most important things, is your soil. Um, we are lucky here, we have a very clayey soil. So that made it easy to dig our swim teich. Um, I think, or well, we think, that it's really difficult to have a swim teich where you have very rocky soil because if you have really big rocks then you need a really good um, excavator um, to take those big rocks out of your soil um, and of course it will be maybe very difficult to get your walls smooth so um, when you have a lot of rocks it's not a good place to have a swim teich. What about sand and uh, gravel, small rocks? Um, it depends if you have really loose sand or loose, loose rocks. You can probably forget it unless um, you plan to have, um, um, of course you can have a swim teich uh, according to this method, but you must uh, probably build um, a body out of wood or out of concrete um, for the swimming zone because it will not be possible to uh, dig the walls when you have really sand uh, real sand or um, gravel if you have between those gravel or sandy layers, if you have clay in between or loam, um, then, you could, then you could try it, but you must be aware of the fact that you won't have your walls um, very accurate. That's about the soil. Ah, how can you find out how your soil is? Well, maybe you can remember some uh, digging that you had to do in your garden and you try to remember how it was. If not, then try to find uh, a, construction a construction site nearby um, where they maybe make a, a cellar and there you could see or you could ask, you could also ask um, a company, a digging company, um, a local digging company because they usually know how the soil is like in your region. Next question. What if your garden is not flat? Well, we don't think that that's a problem. We also didn't have a flat garden. We had about 10% slope. Um, if you have a good uh, excavating operator, um, it's easy for him to form an embankment. And we have seen a few swim dikes that were built in uh, not a flat area. Of course you have to beware that a swim teich costs money, so you also have to keep in mind that it needs some money to install it. Um, and we have seen that in different countries, there are different prices of course, and it really is kind of hard to get welders, for example, for a fair rate in some parts of the world. We have already realized that. Which brings me um, to what I wanted to tell you. Whenever you have um, an experience, when you have made an experience that helps, that could help others, please let us know because we would really like to share um, the possibilities that people have in other countries. Last thing, the shape of a swim teich. You have seen ours, ours is rectangular. Um, we have realized that uh, about seven years ago, until seven years ago, most swim teichs built 
in Austria and Germany um, were round or oval, um, quite natural looking. But since, since the last seven years, um, the taste of people has changed. And nowadays we see a lot of swim tiles that are built um, very in a very geometric shape um, and most of them rectangular. But that's just a matter of taste. Um, everything is possible as long as the regeneration zone always has those two meters uh, wideness. One thing I want to add uh, concerning the shape even if you have a very geometric shape on the outside, the inside, so actually the shape of the swimming zone, should always be rounded. So the corners should not be corners with a 90 degree angle, but they should be rounded. Same walls to the bottom ground, rounded. So the inner shape, if you want so, um, should be naturally formed, um, rounded, but the outside shape doesn't matter at all. So I think that was it. I hope that you could get some information, useful information out of this video. If so, don't forget to give us a thumb up. And if you want to know more and you're not a follower yet, be welcome to follow us. Thanks for watching, have a good day.